Hello and welcome back to another episode of GTNH. And this episode, I can actually change this real quick. Since last episode, I had no explosions, very successful. Last episode, I got the jetpack, which I just showed off, which is nice. And in between episodes, uh, I did a bit of uh, chest crafting. I made some compressed chests and put some miners and some uh, ores. So there you go, one chest full of uh, random stuff. Another chest full of random stuff. And this is this is just the stuff I could not put in my drawers over here. So there's plenty of ores down here that I mine for like a lot of gold, a lot of silver, a lot of lead and stuff, a lot of uh, a lot of everything basically. Also, in between episodes, I just finished working on this. There you go. Uh yeah, 64 HV circuits. Just finished crafting them. So that is very, very nice. Since last episode I spent a lot. Uh, I only had 13 left over. Only 13 HP circuits left over. Now I have a stack in 13. So I can probably finish uh, building the rest of the machines I want for this area here. That would mean I need to move the Thomcraft stuff over here that I have on the back. It should not be an issue. I just I just need to move that stuff. Not, not a big deal. Okay, so the goal for this episode is to do an ore processing setup. Since I have a lot of ores, and the current setup for processing them is uh, all in LV and really, really dumb. So if I want a, uh, anything that makes dust, I put them in here, and then eventually I get dust out here. And if I want something to be turned into an ingot, I put an ore here and I get an ingot out. So, I mean, it works, but it is very, very manual and very, very low intelligence. So that <laughs> I can't I can't get any byproducts and then process those byproducts any further. Like this chest... I have the centrifuge. The centrifuge does give you byproducts for like, let's say electrotene. You get electrotene and redstone, which can't really be processed into anything. But there's some products that give you like iron dust as a byproduct, which then I could smelt into iron ingots and then store in some barrels or drawers to, to have a nicer way of storing it basically. So I think I definitely want to make a system that utilizes a lot of uh, filters, fil type filters, which you can make with these uh, item filters from Greg Tech. Type filters. Yeah, there we go. You can make low voltage type filter. I don't know what the voltage really matters for it. Like, it's just LV stuff. Uh, LV circuit and uh, like an LV conveyor. I think I'll make these ones because I think this is just the easiest. I do have a lot of stuff for LV, st uh, LV stuff. So the thin cables and wrought iron. It's all good. Uh, although it does only filter one item type. So if I want, let's say, um, a dust, right? If I want dust to be moved to a spot and then I can use um, the Ender IO filters, which which have specific items you can filter out. Like over here, I have a filter, a basic item filter, which has hot ingots here. I could probably do a type filter with hot ingots as a thing as well. So, but but some 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 dusts need specific recipes so that I would I would need to move them uh, more intelligently. I would say. So that's that's one goal for the for this episode is ore processing. The second goal is a clean room, which if it is in the multi block goals, it's over here. And the clean room requires a bunch of things. It needs these plastcrete blocks and filter machine casings, which a filter machine casing is a lot of these item filters as well. Nothing else really crazy. It's just steel. But the clean room controller itself needs an HV circuit, needs some motors, needs some more item filters. And then the plastcrete, which is the big issue, I, I would say, is wet concrete, which is not an issue by itself. But... The black steel frame box <laughs> means you need uh, black steel, which I haven't made yet, I don't think. Yeah, there we go. It's a blast furnace. You need to get black steel dust. And to make that, you need to mix steel dust, nickel dust, and black bronze. And black bronze is a mixture of electrum and copper. And electrum is a uh, mixture of silver and gold. Yeah, silver and gold. So <laughs> I did the recipe checking previously already. And there you go. This is everything I'm going to need, basically, for making this thing. So for make for getting 80 82 plascrete, you need a lot of black steel uh, and to get... So, yeah, it's a total of uh, two stacks and 36 of pla uh, black steel. And to get that, you need uh, this amount of dust, basically. So that's fun. Uh, time to make that, I guess. Or actually, I think I'll start. I, I think I'll start, actually with uh, doing some more of these uh, machines over here on this wall. Oh, and also, yeah, I, I put the markers for what kind of things they are on the floor so that it's way easier for me to remember. It's all nice. It's all nice, I would say. 
I need to start by moving all of this stuff away. And uh, hello, Pigman. Nice. Uh, I need to start by moving all of this stuff away. So I'll be back when it's all moved. Okay, well, the actual cable does not reach the end yet. So I'll need to make more of these cables. But that's not really an issue as I did go mining for a lot more silver. Uh, I do just need to paint this real quick. And there we go. Nice and painted. And now I can put more machines here. As I do have a lot of batteries here. And it's only one EU loss per meter. So not really a big issue. Just need to put the machines here. So I did favorite some of the machines I do want already. That I have over here. That would be nice to, it would be nice to upgrade them to HP. And I guess I never mentioned this. But I also did combine the L uh, MV chest. That I have the, with the crafting station. And the HP chest that was there. Uh, I combined them into one, and with this chest accessing this uh, crafting station, it is very nice, I gotta say. I, I do enjoy this a lot. So, yeah, let's let's start by crafting some of these uh, some of these things I, I need. Yeah, let's make a lathe, because uh, some recipes do need the lathe, and uh, they are quite slow. Uh, just make this real quick. Advanced lathe. Probably not a quest, I'm guessing. Let's make the... Extractor, yeah, there we go. Extractor is nice. Uh, then the alloy smelter, yeah. So that needs 4x cantal, four of them. And I did have some cantal here, so I can make... I can make the four, four x cantal and make the alloy furnace. Alloy smelter. There you go. Probably not a quest, right? None of these are quests. Yeah. Then the next one is probably the forge hammer, which requires an anvil. So make the anvil. There you go. And now go to this chest to make the forge hammer. There we go. The chemical bath. Take this off the thing. So the chemical bath. Can I make it? No, it needs two of these. Chemical bath. There we go. And there we go. A precision laser as well. So this is like basically everything. Oh, precision. Nice. Uh, what was this? The laser one. Yeah, the laser one. So I'll put the laser engraver, forge hammer, and chemical bath here. Six more new machines. Very nice. So now that I have these machines, I can actually remove some of these. Like the lathe does not need to be here anymore. Take the rod away. The sifting machine stays. Unpackager stays. Chemical reactor. This is the one I was using for making circuits. Making MV circuits, I think it was. So I don't need that one anymore because I have the atri tier. I have another extractor so I can remove this one as well. This one does not need to be here. Wait, did I make a compressor? I don't think I made a compressor, did I? Chemical bath, advanced, uh, forge hammer, laser engraver, alloy smelter, extractor, lathe. Yeah, there's no compressor. How did I miss a compressor? I want a compressor. And there we go. Make one of these. So let's go here. The compressor as well. This is like the last slot on, on here as well. Cool. I need to move some of this stuff now, since I can use, I have these machines, I have the compressor, I have the alloy smelter, I have the forge hammer, macerator as well, chemical bath, forming press, and fluid canner. So right, right now I have like, a polarizer, a fluid canner, canning machine, sifting machine, unpackager, Forming press and another fluid canner. And then the MV machines there that I don't want to move yet. So let's put these uh, blocks over here. Items to show. So this is like a lathe because it makes the long sticks. The extractor. I'll put this one since I remember that that's what I always put in the ex extractor. Uh, an alloy smelter makes like ingots. So put that there. Oh, it's sideways. It's annoying. Okay, there we go. Fix that. The forge hammer is, well, a hammer. Like, there we go. The compressor definitely gets this iron block. That makes sense. All of these uh, make sense, I think. Now, I want to work on ore processing. The way you get ore processing, you, there's a couple, a couple ways you can approach this issue. Either you do something like this, where I have uh, a chain of um machines for one specific resource and then you and then then the only thing is you need to sort out where each resource should go uh or 
or you do the more complex thing which is have each machine on its own and you have like a input that is filtered to that specific machine so yeah i don't know how, how exactly i'm gonna do this this is probably something i'll do uh off camera because doing it on camera would be basically impossible since let's let's say for an example i want to process gold ore right the gold ore has byproducts it has options i could do i can macerate it and then i have a 10 percent chance to get copper dust as well as the two crushed gold ore and then i have to choose which path do i want to go if i macerate it again then i get impure piles of gold dust and impure piles get you a smaller chance of copper extra like as an extra byproduct but it goes through the centrifuge which takes a long time and a lot of electricity i guess i'll grab a couple ores yeah, just a couple ores that make sense. And then something that isn't just an uh, ore that goes into an ingot. Something that goes into a dust maybe as well. Like cobaltite, I think, goes into a dust, right? Yeah, the end, end result is just the cobaltite dust, which I don't actually smelt, I don't think. Yeah, it's it's, it's like uh, cobalt, arsenic, and sulfur as the bio and end products. So, like, some recipes like this, they need an electrolyzer to get the cobaltite into actual end products. Like, cobalt... Arsenic and sulfur are, are the end product. Cobalt that is just a uh, <laughs> precursor, basically. You can see it's uh, copper, arsenic, and sulfur in the chemical name itself. CO, AS, and S. But these ones are just simple elements. So I, my goal is to make a processing setup that gets most of the things into basic elements. Like copper, uh, cobalt, arsenic, and sulfur. So I don't know. I, I'll see what I can do. See what I can figure out. Probably going to use uh, a lot of HV machines as well to do that. We'll see how that goes. Need another one of these universal macerators though, for sure, for sure. I could put it over here on this wall. Yeah, I, I think I'll put the ore processing on this wall here. So I, I can still see the machines. I want to be able to see the machines and have it be visually looking nice. But as well as uh, have a big input slot and then output slots. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. I'll, I'll just put the machines here and I'll be back when I'm done. See you in a bit and i'm back there we go so this is the system that i built and you can see it working right now as well this is nice there's stuff always happening here there's stuff always happening here so i have the i uh, have the macerators i have the advanced thermal centrifuges i have the ore washing plant i have turbo centrifuges i have sifting a, sif a single sifting machine and i have four electric furnaces so the input into the system that I've made is this chest here, or even better, just break this chest and put in the chest that um, I get from the miners, because these compressed chests, you can keep the contents, right? So I just put the chest here. This Ender IO conduit remembers to pull from this side, so I don't, I don't even need to uh, set the filters every single time. And then it all the items that I get from, from this chest here, to here this is the buffer chest for all the things that need to be processed filtered and processed and the way this works i can show you the filtering system don't pay attention to that yet <laughs> i'll start very simply so input into this chest is on the green signal this is where you insert into this chest you pull out with the blue signal you extract on blue you pull out everything you can basically that uh, i also have some speed upgrades in here <laughs> so that the process is actually fast basically Try and pull anything you can out of this chest, which then goes along all this Ender IO conduits. All of these Ender IO conduits, which is like, this is just chaos. But it, try not to get overwhelmed. I'll show it off with the simplest thing, the macerator. So the blue signal is pulling from here and pushing any into any available slot. And I have all of these blue set to insert on all of these item filters. Everything is on blue insert. Oh yeah, this one. So, there is a macerator over here. No, not a macerator, but the low voltage type filter. I'm using two types of things. Uh, I'm using a type filter, and I'm using a normal item filter. Normal item filters contain uh, nine slots, nine filtered items you can you can try and uh, filter basically. And they only accept these nine types of items into them. So this blue pushing in these only these items can get pushed in nothing else and then it pushes into these slots where then let's say red here pulls out on the signal red 
and it pushes into any any available channels that are red any available output slots that are red and only only this one here is red which goes into a trash can so this filter here is basically my trash filter anything that's in those chests over here in, in, in this chest here that is trash that i consider trash like stone dust or cobblestone or dirt immediately gets sent to the trash whereas if you look at the uh the very very bottom one here the type filter this one only accepts ores so anything that's an ore goes into here and is gonna get macerated since this is one of those that is <laughs> one of the filter types that actually does is, is really really good for this specific use and any any ore is going to go into this buffer and then get pulled into this green channel and the green channel goes over here into the input here and after the machine is done with the processing it pushes it out into green uh green and then lime those are the two signals here this is lime and this is green yeah so extract on green and then it pushes it into that chest over there so any any byproducts even you get from doing this right because a lot of these recipes have byproducts like i just got saltpeter dust as an extra thing it's like a 10 percent chance or something right so even the saltpeter dust is going to get pulled into this after the that gets processed basically this is a continuously working system there's no like um in, in, input and output in a normal <laughs> record so let's say the dust was the final result that i wanted right um at the very very end here there are two different types of uh type of filters one is for barrels and one and and some are for chests so the barrels are the um uh these ones over here these are the barrels and this is the chest the the barrels are on the purple channel and the chest is on the white channel these are the very very bulk things that i'm gonna get like iron for example look at that 92 stacks of iron already and 207 stacks of redstone dust so i have been running this machine for a while and i have been continuously adding more filters and and, and for everything that i might want to filter basically Any, anything i might need to do every single ore every single dust every single impure pile of everything is gonna get its own filter basically and the reason i'm doing um a lot of manual filtering for specific ores like let's say here i have this single malachite right here and then like centrifuge brown limonite and yellow limonite these are very like specific things because the malachite can only get macerated <laughs> into malachite dust which then can get smelted into copper ingots so the malachite dust has no use at all basically like this block of malachite has literally nothing as, as well like it, it does nothing so there's a couple things like this where like because this also counts as a gem which is the weird thing it counts as a gem so if i have a type filter over here in the chests uh chest thingies that is just for a gem it's it's gonna do diamond gem emerald gem all of these ones like opals and stuff which is really nice but it's also gonna pull the malachite which i don't want i want specifically malachite to get macerated so if I do a type filter here, it's going to do chaos. So I need to do, I need to be very sparing where I use these type filters. Like over here, chip gemstones are always going to be chip gemstones. There's no like variance for chip gemstones, I'm pretty sure. So I can use this one here. I can use uh, flawed gemstones. I can use flawless gemstones, exquisite gemstones here. So all of these are safe, um, but the rest need to be manually filtered, like diamonds and coal and, and salt and lapis and stuff like that all of these need to be manually set set filters to, to do that so and this is pretty simple uh, one of these stacks is for basically the centrifuge here that i pull out of the light gray signal and i push into the light gray signal over here and yeah but it just works some of these are more complicated for example i have diamond uh di diatomite dust and i have real guard dust here i actually have set filters to blacklist uh real gar for example in here so it doesn't try and put real gar in here so that this centrifuge never gets stuck with both of these uh dusts that cannot be um centrifuge unless you have enough of them like this diamond diametite it only works if you have 10 so uh it's actually diatomite diatomite okay yeah it gives you fl flint banded iron and sapphire so i mean i want to process these things but they they need to be specific amounts so i need to do some uh, blacklist thing on these ones like for example this these two top ones have blacklist for both realgar and and diatomite 
so that they never get clogged up. So the only this one can get Dithamite and only this one can get real car. So eh, there's some extra filtering I need to do every once in a while. But um, overall, the system is pretty, pretty, pretty nice in, in the way it works. Where I, I, I can choose one of these things that's really nice, I think, was the uh, rare earth things. Yeah. So the way you get rare earth is, I mean, you can get it from a couple of ways, but redstone, <laughs> you get it from redstone. And it's a very specific path here as well that I, I want to choose. So you get redstone or you macerate it into the crushed redstone has a chance of cinnabar. And then you ore wash it has a chance for cinnabar. And then you macerate it has a chance for rare earth, 10%. And then you centrifuge it, which is 11% chance for rare earth. And this path is the best because you have two chances of rare earth. Whereas this path over here, the cent thermal centrifuge, and then at the macerator, has one chance of rare earth, and then glowstone. I don't really care for glowstone, because I can farm that. Can't really farm rare earth, I don't think. <laughs> so, there you go, I made, I, I used this path here, and I just set the filters to manually say, like, if it's a, if it's this redstone ore, crushed redstone ore, it's gonna go into the ore washing plant, and after that, it's gonna go into the macerator, and after that, it's gonna go into the centrifuge. So... There you go. And now I have <laughs> 31 stacks of uh, rare earth, which later on can get processed. I mean, technically I can do it already. It just requires sulfuric acid. I have access to it. I could do it. Um, and then you get rare earth stuff and then you can process it more and then you get more stuff and then you get more stuff. And yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. It has its own processing line here. Uh, I think the actual useful thing you want to go for is this path here, the macerator into macerator into centrifuge because that gets you yttrium which is a thing that's probably useful at some point so yeah i mean eventually stuff is gonna get used right a everything's gonna get used eventually <laughs> so every like hour or so i just like come in here and i look to see um uh anything that needs <laughs> anything that needs processing for example this radium is worrying me a bit because it doesn't stack this is a thing i get from thorium as a byproduct but as you can see here i saw that there's radium and it's like uh i mean it's just a really small chance to get it as well but i didn't think this wouldn't stack that's awkward maybe i don't do this recipe maybe just keep it as this uh, purified thorium ore until i have some way to use it i could un undo the filter okay well i could show you a couple things basically one of these let's say Air Shard and Yellow Garnet are definitely output products that can't get processed into anything else. So I just take these and I bring them all the way back here to the chest filters here. Find an empty slot, put this in here, put this in here, and there you go. Filter's done. <laughs> Never need to do that filter again. I probably need more H uh, sifters. Because that, that is the one thing that was annoying me about this system that I built, is that all of these have four machines except for the sifter because previously i was like oh well the, you don't need that many sifters you only need like one because there's not that many sifting recipes but the more filters i apply the more i see that yeah there is in fact a lot of sifter recipes same thing i thought actually for the oil washing plant like oh you don't need that many oil washers yeah you do you do and you remember how i made a stack of hv circuits in the start of the episode or like in between episodes yeah well I, I had to do more circuits i made one whole stack more even after doing this because i just used all of it um and you might have noticed that like there's a lot of machines here so how do you power them you make more <laughs> more generators i have in total nine turbo combustion generators so yeah might be a bit overkill but at the time at the time while i was uh adding them I didn't do any math about like how many you actually need. What I did was I looked at the batteries. Are, are the batteries full? Great. If they're draining, bad. Add more generators. That that was my logic. So, yeah, nine nine in total right now. Pretty crazy. But yeah, this this is the basic process. I just like come come over here every once in a while and uh, do stuff. All right. Well, I'll just let this machine run for a while. Um, do all the processing it can and yeah, whatever. <laughs> Definitely at this point, I can say that I have done uh, ore processing, which sadly I couldn't really show on camera that well, but this took, to be fair, like a whole day to set up and then uh, even more just to wait for processing a lot of the things like 200 stacks of redstone through the centrifuge takes forever. Yeah, I, I basically took like two days to do this, which I mean, 
maybe I could have done it differently. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the system's really nice. Or like, I mean, it's not perfect. Of course, it's not perfect. But but like, if I if I if I if I, if I had me right now, if I if I had applied logistics, I would have done it way differently, like using priorities and stuff for things. But right now, this is the best I got. So yeah, that's 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 what I got. That's what I have to do. So. Um, while I was making that as well, I did in fact put uh, a lot of the things I needed were like black steel. Um, I, I prepared all the black steel basically. For the for the clean room, you need uh, what is this? Two stacks and thirty six. I have two stacks and thirty seven because of the way the alloying works. Yeah, I made all these dusts basically. It wasn't really hard. Uh, electrum is just silver and gold, and then copper that makes black bronze, and then. Steel, nickel, and black bronze makes black steel. Not a big issue. Now, this needs to be put through the uh, extruder to make rods. I think all of it goes into rods, actually. To be nice. Uh, that's going to take a while, but... There you go, making black steel rods, which then can ma get made into black steel, black steel frame boxes. And I also need polyethylene pulp to make the plastcrete. So... Yeah, I can do I can do plates, right? Polyethylene plates, sheets into into the things, so should not be an issue. I have a molten polyethylene and then polyethylene sheets, which I should be able to just uh, macerate. I'm fairly confident I can just macerate this to get the pulp. I'll put in one to see. What does it give me? Yeah, polyethylene pulp. Perfect. I just need uh, one stack of that and then some extra. What is it? The uh, 18 extra. And that's all the polyethylene pulp. Actually, did I even show the output just for this? I mean, I think I did show this. I'm not sure actually, but this is this is that this is how the output chest looks right now, and I can actually sort some stuff out because I don't need all these uh, gems in here, like these weird gems. All of these can just get moved into the into the chest over here. I have for storing them. This compressed chest here, very nice. Is this thing done by now? Or is it still going? It's on the last 40. I guess it's close to done. I can start making the boxes. Uh, I could do it either manually or with an assembler. Which, I mean, I think I'll just do the assembler. That seems easier for me. Set it to 4. And make some of these boxes. While well, well, this is finishing the last things. Black steel frame box. And then the black steel frame box. To make into plastcrete, you need an assembler with wet concrete. So, uh, you need 11,000 white concrete, so I'll need one more cell, which I can get from over here, not the backpack, this thing, yep. Yeah. That's going to be 16,000 liters, that's plenty. Just need to wait for the boxes to finish, and this to finish doing this. Okay, that's the last of the rods. And put them in here, make all the rest of the thingies here, the boxes. Okay, I'll need to pull out all of this polyethylene here. Put in the concrete. Just put this in here and put this in here. And it's going to start doing the craft. And first plastcrete. Very nice. Can I make it? There we go. Can I make a clean room controller. Oh, quest complete. Oh, it only cares about this one. Okay, cool. Uh, the filter machine casing. Ooh, yes. This is something I'll probably need as well, right? Yeah, so I think I'm making this one here. The uh, tier 2 one, which is a 3x3 three three inside. Which is a really small, actually, area. Do I just go for, like, a tier 3, which is a 5x5 five five inside? And just butt the bullet and make, make everything? Maybe I should. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... A 3x3 three three is fine for now, I think. Probably. Probably is fine. I'll just guess that it's fine. That's that's my assumption. I don't need more, probably. Ah, whatever. My instincts say I probably need more, but I'll just make more when I actually need to expand it instead of that. So, so I do need eight of those filter thingies, which means I'm probably going to run out of these, right? Uh, item filters. Why does it not show it in the quest line here? No, it does. It does show this. Yeah. Okay, favorite that. I need eight. Okay, 24 item filters. I don't have 24. I have half of that. Okay, great. 
Yeah, this is a really, really fun recipe. Ha ha ha. Really fun recipe to make item filters. I've, I've made like two stacks of these already, by the way. It's a lot of fine steel wire and it's a lot of zinc foil. So now the craft is done. I have all of that. So 16 of those, 8 of those, 8 rotors, 16 item filters, and what else? This. Yeah. Okay. Making these. Very nice. Okay, one of the things I need to figure out is where do I want to put it? Um, so, I guess something I didn't mention. Yeah, this Ender IO tank, this reservoir. Um, I was pumping water because the washers need water. All of these uh, need, uh, all these wa washing plants need water. And I was running all of them at the same time. And so these four <laughs> water tanks I had over there were really really not up to par like I, I used up all the water there and then i was just like slowly 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 i can only i can only barely use one of the machines kind of and it was like half speed so i had to like go into the uh ender io reservoir thing find find that real quick uh yeah to make it it's just two hv pumps which is pretty expensive uh fused quartz which is like surface quartz and glass dust or like there's a couple ways to do it quartzite and nether quartz other other ways to do it but yeah uh, fused quartz and then that's that's you need two of these four in total of these so dust craft two times which is i mean it's a bit expensive but uh, when you need an infinite water source here like you just need it there's no choice so you have to do that and now i have to choose where to put it um the way i'm gonna get into it is with an elevator block which means I don't ever open a door and never let, like, dirty air in. Because the clean room needs to be clean. If you, if you leave the door open for a while, it, like, there's a high chance you start voiding recipes, which is bad. So I have the elevator blocks, which you can just go through the blocks. You don't even need to... Yeah. <laughs> the blocks can be in the way and I can still enter the thing, so... What is a good spot for the thing? Maybe below this place. What if this was the clean room area? Oh, that could work, actually. Because it doesn't have anything below it yet. But if I look over here, this area is just, like, empty. I have the barrels there. I have the signs over here. I have the barrels over there as well. And I'm kind of running low on fuel as well. Uh, need to address that. But I think this area is fine. Uh, should be big enough as well. Yeah. Let's go and put a thing over here. An elevator block. And then I'll go below. And it's said that these elevator blocks can be used as the floor of the block, of the multi-block. So, this should be fine, if if it's if it doesn't lie. And then I use Blast Crate over here. And this is going to be the inside of the thing. It's a super small thing, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Oh, wow. How am I even going to fit anything in here? Okay, I think I see a way to actually fit some machines in here. It's not going to be pretty, but I can do it. I can do it, definitely. That's the 5x5. Five five. Uh, is this enough? 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, that is a 5 tall thing, but then I don't really have access to the controller from above. I guess I have access to it from below. Mm. No, I think I'll just move this down one. And then I just need to do this and move all of these down a bit. What is happening? What? Why is my... Is this my mouse or is it something weird? Why was my mouse doing that? What is this? Hello? Mouse? Uh, what? 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 What was that? Why was my wrench doing that? Why is it doing this? What is happening? What? what? This is no way. This is my mouse. This is some weird stuff. Elevator block in the middle. What? No, that's not an elevator block. Elevator block here. This lets me go up and down. Go up and actually grab the things that it should have crafted already. Yeah, there we go. Eight filter machine casings. And now I should be able to do that lean room controller here that that should be right yeah three tall perfect just do the filter thingies and then i just complete the frame right 
Uh, I do need to actually make the thing for inputting power. So I'll do the corners and edges and do that. How many am I going to be missing, actually? I think since I have power over there... Now, nah, I'll do more generators for this area specifically. That makes sense to generate power for this. Well, that's a lot of empty slots, actually. What, what is this? Why is there so many empty slots? How much? How many things does it want? The maintenance hatch makes sense. I'll, I'll get one of those. Should have it here, right? There you go. Maintenance hatch. It needs an uh, energy hatch for itself, I think, right? Uh, there you go. The power usage of this multi-block is a bit unusual. It starts out at 40 EU per tick and then gradually goes down. But even when it uses... 40 EU per tick, which is usually MV, uh, a single LV energy hatch suffices. Just keep in mind that this makes the clean room an exception, not the rule. So I don't even need a fancy energy hatch. It's just an LV one, which I sh probably should have in here, right? Yeah, there you go. LV energy hatch. Let's say that the maintenance hatch goes here. If I want to automate stuff, how do I do it? I think I'll do it from like this side is going to be one of them uh and this side is gonna be another for like input output maybe i think this could work i'm not sure and then an energy hatch for the thing itself which i can put like maybe here is this a basic one this generates lv yeah that's lv i can just put it let's say here and hook it up to that That's just an LV thing. Um, LV was red, so let's dye that as well. The fact that this wasn't colored already kind of is annoying. Okay, but there you go. Uh, so what else? What else? What else? I have two more machine hulls, which I don't know how the input output facing works. I probably need to rotate this the other way. Like that. Yeah, one is going in and one is going out. I'm assuming that that's how it works. I don't know. I'll just put uh, another one here and another one here. What is this? Why does it do that? This is so weird. Is it specific angles? I don't understand. Why does it get stuck on mining it? Now, now I kind of want to figure this out. Like, what? Oh, this is so bizarre. I'm, I'm getting, like, annoyed. Okay, but... This seems to be... Fine now, right? What is it? What is it? Oh, it's gonna say it needs uh, maintenance, right? Let's use the toolbox. Is it done now? Is it all happy? Is it happy? Screws are loose. That doesn't belong there. Huh. What am I missing? Screwdriver? Hammer? No. <laughs> Don't I have everything in here? Uh, what am I missing? I guess I don't have a screwdriver in here. So, screwdriver? Did that fix the screw thing? Okay, that fixed the screw thing. And then the hammer is probably just that. No, that's not a hammer thing. Soft mallet? No. Crowbar? Okay, it was crowbar. Okay, nice. So now it should be happy. Right? Start it up. Clean room running. Nice. Oh, it actually sucked it upwards. That was cool. Uh, okay. Nice. How do, how do I know when it's like... Uh, well, it's using 40 EU per tick right now. Because it needs to clean the air in here. It needs to make everything nice and uh, nice and tidy. So, I just wait for that to be done. While that's happening, uh, I can actually check this off. Clean room is done. Nice. Now, the question is, do I also go for the the third thing more a more ebfs in this episode or do i do it later oh i didn't do the no can i disable it for now can i turn it off because i just did lv machine hull which is going to only be able to pass one amp of power of lv which is really bad so i'm just going to turn it off oh man i forgot about that because i switched the tab here to something else yeah i want one of these so i just need four diodes we have in here I want, uh, what is this? 8x gold cable. 8x gold cable. Okay, that's the last one. And make this. Nice. 
and I will put it probably on this side uh bottom here yeah there you go have the power I think that works I think that's right if I look on this side I actually don't know which side is which I don't know I just ge genuinely don't know I need to figure that out I can do uh these blue alloy like this the machines can go in the middle here or or I could do um machines uh yeah, I think this works for now. Yeah, th this is fine. This is fine. And if I want the other side, I can do that as well. But for now, yeah, nothing's going to get crafted. I think I can now actually start the clean room again and make it so it uh, cleans the air and stuff. Oh, it says efficiency 3%. Is it increasing over time as well? Oh boy, that's really slow. Yeah, now it's 4%. Now it's 5%. So every, every 6.7 seconds, it increases by 1%. That's like 30 minutes, I guess? I don't even know. I don't care. I'll just let it run its thing and then come back when it's done. So, yeah. If the clean room has maintenance issues, it will have a, th a chance to avoid recipes needing a clean room. 10% per maintenance issue. Uh, monitor your clean room with a, with a hand scanner, industrial information panel, or using a needs maintenance cover and a redstone-powered light or howler alarm. So, I probably want a needs... Needs maintenance cover. So maintenance cover. Cover, maintenance, maintenance cover. That's an MV emitter. Wow, okay. Um do that. Nice. Five more filters. Not a great amount, but something. And it's done. Very nice. And then the howler alarm. How hard is this? Uh probably not that bad. I bet I could do this. Make a single note block. One of these coil, which is 16 copper wire and magnetic steel. I'm going to make four coils, maybe. Yeah, perfect. Nice. Howler alarm. Very nice. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Actually, where is this? <laughs> where is the thing? Oh, it's here. That's interesting. Okay, well, I'll just try and put it on the top, I guess, for now. So, if I do one of these on the top. So, yeah, if it, if it has one issue, it will emit a thing a signal i i hope and then the howler alarm just sound range i don't know how i mean max max range probably I, I want to know about it happening no matter where i am in my base and then sound default or sci-fi i really don't know there's no like try out button so <laughs> i guess i could try out by by doing a redstone signal right okay let's see oh my god that's loud and horrible yeah what about sci-fi Okay, this is somehow better. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, that's how loud that's gonna be. Cool. Uh, yeah, if that happens, I just, I know I need to run here and fix it. Is there no, like, volume slider, really? Ah, whatever. I'll leave it on sci-fi. That, that seems good to me. Okay, that's, that's that. That's the clean room. How, how is the, how's the clean, clean cleanliness? Oh, 96% already. Nice. So I can start, uh, bringing in some machines and stuff. Uh, I do need to set up a power thing for them, though. I have I have two options. I have a bad option and a good option, probably. I could just bring this power from here straight to there, which is not even that large of a distance. Maybe that's fine? Or I just set up a generator there and, and bring it straight into there. I don't know. I am generating the power already over here. This is going to be very inefficient. And I don't recommend anybody do this, I think. But I, I want the spaghetti to go over here. Okay, so it's close to connecting there. I don't want it to connect. I'll just go like that. Do something like that. Uh, This one only accepts 8, and it should only push through 8 if possible, right? Like, it's not gonna push more than uh, I can. But even if it does, it should be fine. I think this is safe to do. Like, this is an 8, eight amp thing, cable, which, which means it's only gonna get, let 8 amps in. Which means there's no explosions gonna happen, right? If there's an explosion, I'm gonna cry. Okay, no explosion. Cool. I'm gonna say this is a temporary setup, but I still want to paint this. Even though it's temporary, I'm going to paint it. So, yes. Nice. And what machines do I need to put in the thing? <laughs> now, now that I've done that, what machines do I need to do? 
Um, okay, one of them is a cutting machine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the laser engraver needs to be in here, so... HV laser engraver. And then the circuit assembler, which... This is an MV one? Oh, that's gonna be annoying. I need to transform the power from HV into MV. And there we go. Medium. So, this one allows me to do HV to MV. That's nice. And I'll need another one of those circuit assemblers. That's AMV. Or... Do I just take it from here? I have the circuit assembler here. I might as well just take this one. There you go. Nice. So if I do that one. And this is... Wait, is it right? Is it doing step down right now? No, this is output. I need to soft mallet it. What did it say? This is step up. Step down. HV to MV. But this is the input, I think. So I need to turn it around. Like that. Now, this is the output, 4 amps of MV, and this is going to say input HV and 1 amp. Yeah, there you go. Nice. So, now I just need these MV. Yeah, there you go. These can go here. Probably just one for now. Don't really need more. And then I put the circuit assembler here, or like this maybe. And then I put, uh, well, the machines I haven't made yet. There you go. There you go, another laser engraver. And then that's it, right? Yeah. So let's go here. This is really cramped, but <laughs> that's the way it is. So cutting machine here and then laser engraver here. That should be fine. 100% efficiency. Very nice. And now, well, what can I do with this? Um... This is my next step. Integrated processors need central processing units. You can get these by cutting up central processing unit wafer. So I need a wafer and glass lens in a clean room. So this is where this fun stuff starts. So I don't have that many wafers. I don't know how, how much stuff of this I need. It makes eight. I'll do like eight, eight wafers then. Uh, do I have a glass lens? That's the question. Uh, glass... Di oh, diamond lens works. Okay. I think I have a diamond lens. I should have a diamond lens at least. I think I have a, a bunch of diamond lenses actually. Yeah, I have four extra here. So, let's go here. Put this in here. Make some, uh, make some wafers. This is, the, this is the only machine that I like the sound of. This is the only machine that's nice. Because it does the sound once when it starts the craft. And then it stops and it's just quiet. It's nice. What's going to be the next thing? Okay, and then this one's going to be an integrated processor. Oh boy. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of stuff I need, right? So the central processing unit is fine. Uh, I'm going to need good uh, good, pl good plastic circuit boards. We're just going to need... Uh, yeah, I, I have the iron to chloride. I just need these, which is polyethylene sheets and sulfuric acid and copper. So... Oh, that's a whole thing I also need. I haven't done that yet. I guess I can make a stack of these. Two big cells of iron 3 chloride. Very nice. Six stacks of uh, foil. Well, to make those, I also need this. Oh, there's going to be even more copper files. Okay. I'm going to need four stacks. So yeah, I'm going to work for the good plastic uh, boards for now. So I need uh, 32... 32 liters of that. 32... Thousand liters, whatever, whatever the logic there is, I don't even know. That means four of these large cells. There you go. Iron three chloride, and I need two cells of this. There you go. No circuit, nothing, right? Just put the sulfuric acid in, and then this and that, and that starts doing it. Nice. Starting to make good, good boards. Very nice. So this is still making. Uh, these ones I can start putting into the cutting machine, right? I just put these in here. No circuit, right? Gonna take a while, but to be expected. Okay, I have some of these now. That should complete one quest, right? Yes. So now that this is done, I just claim the loot bag since I have enough diamond lenses, I think. 
Uh, what is next? Yeah, this one. Making stuff for the circuit board thingies. Uh. Okay. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I probably should just end the episode here. It's, uh, it's getting quite long and I did spend like uh, three days working on it <laughs> total. Which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. I guess uh, one thing I do is uh, open some loot bags just to celebrate that I got a clean room, I guess. And also an ore processing setup. Yeah, the ore processing setup was definitely like the biggest, biggest time sink here. Uh, man, I really need more sifting machines, don't I? This is a bottleneck. Okay, I see. I see a problem. I need to fix that. Three more will be added. Uh, but now I do want to do this real quick. Open the loot bags. Kind of useless. Uh, kind of useless, but somewhat useful. Um, don't know what that is. Uh, track is useless. Saplings, trash, empty canister canisters. Okay. Uh, these are probably, I mean, yeah, they're used for some things. Sure. Fine. I'm happy, I, I guess. All right, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So nice. Nice. There we go. A clean room. Very, very cramped clean room, but still a cl clean room. Very nice. And then over here. Yep. That's the ore setup. So very nice. Very nice. Man, this has been a lot of progress this episode, but it just feels weird because uh, it's been so uh, <laughs> over many days. That's why it feels weird. But yeah, I guess in between episodes, I will just keep adding more filters here. Uh, setting up this uh, machine, the, the ore processing to be more refined and uh, and faster because the yeah I need more sifters here. But yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.